Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's the leader of the Cosmic Armada, Wolf Nara, back to bring you another Boruto 2 Blue Vortex discussion. We're going to be talking about how not too many people understand Kawaki and his decisions and things. So we're going to go into the character and different events in his life to lead to him up to this point and maybe what he was thinking throughout that time. And so if you guys enjoy videos like this, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Tell a friend and tell a friend. We got more Boruto discussions again. So let's get started. So when looking at Kawaki, we're going to talk about uh, the beginning of his life first. So essentially Kawaki had a alcoholic abusive father in which Kawaki will have to work day in, day out, just that way he could buy his father like a, a gallon of sake or a fifth of sake. I don't know how that worked. Hey, man. Hey, man. I don't think that was like no fifth of Hennessy or nothing. But um, when it comes to that portion, he was often getting beat whenever he either A, broke the bottle or didn't bring back the bottle. He would often get down, talked upon, basically being told that he was nothing. And so... At that point in his life, he, he really didn't feel that he was nothing. He, he felt that the only reason he was he was existing at that point was to make his father's life a lot easier than what it was. Because although his father was always angry, he never necessarily blamed his father for his shortcomings. He always tried to take the understanding route. Even though you can't really try to understand everyone, some people are just bad people. In which his father was just one of those situations where... He was affected by the the ninja world war the fourth great ninja world war um in which he's now out of a job and he probably lo lost his wife as well because we see when kawaki and him is just those two he doesn't have kawaki's mother at hand um or kawaki he doesn't have kawaki's mother in the house and so now the father is now taking out his depression his aggression on his son because that's the only person around him who would feel just as powerless as he is and who he can actually dominate in regards whoa that was crazy he would be able to dominate that person with little to no resistance and basically making Kawaki an easy target whether it was his son or not he was an easy target for his father's frustration and so as Kawaki is leaving he constantly goes across this guy who's selling uh, items to the village. He says he's going to basically pack up and leave because no one wants to buy anything from him. And so Kawaki begins to trust this guy. And so later on down the line, Kawaki's father uh, sells Kawaki to Jigen, in which um, Jigen gives him a, a suitcase full of money that would be enough to basically drink, allow his father to drink himself to death and never be seen or heard from again. Um, so when Jigen takes Kawaki, he just basically tells him he's not going to long for anything anymore. He's not going to want anything anymore. And, and it goes to show how adults be, words can be misconstrued to kids because we know Jigen considers Kawaki a vessel. So yes, he's not going to want for anything anymore. He's not going to long for anything anymore because Ishiki is going to inhabit that body. So it wouldn't necessarily be... Kawaki's will wanting anything or needing anything because he doesn't exist anymore. He's, he's been getting genetically overridden once the karma is implanted and Jigen's soul is transferred into the vessel. So when Kawaki, when Jigen begins to take Kawaki out of town, he's run back into the salesman in which the salesman was, um, it looked like the salesman was trying to defend Kawaki himself from getting taken uh, by Jigen, kind of almost reminiscent of showing that the the fishman seeing something in Jigen slash Shisiki that even Kawaki himself didn't see at the time. And so with that being said, the fisherman then tries to attack Jigen in which he unalives himself. But before he attacked Jigen, he makes his true motive known, basically saying that he was gonna he was gaining Kawaki's trust over time so that way he could completely abandon his father, completely abandon that sense of life and he was gonna sell Kawaki into slavery. And so it just goes to show that even the entirety of Kawaki's life for his childhood was just 
basically being fooled by older people or being fooled by everyone around them not really getting help from those because we see the other villagers see Kawaki um, carrying the sake bottle every day back to his house and they always say that yeah his, his father is a terrible person his father does this his father beats him however it doesn't necessarily have them they don't necessarily go out their way to help they don't necessarily go out their way to help Kawaki in that situation they just typically turn the blind eye similar to how we see with Naruto uh, when he was a child in his child in his younger years before we got to know him as the academy student back when he just had the Uzumaki symbol on the white sh on the on the that motherfucker was not white boy that motherfucker that motherfucker was a goddamn dingy ass white shirt boy you, hey man if you if you had that dingy ass white shirt man you, you know that bitch not white no more bro they don't got that white glisten no more bro that bitch all stressed out and shit so now it's the same situation. Everyone seeing Naruto struggling, but nobody went out there where to help him. Um, and so Naruto pretty much then begins to get soaked in his own negative emotions and his own depression. And so we see the same thing um, with Kawaki as well. We know that Kishimoto's uh, often pretty much draws rights parallels for the two characters in regards to Kawaki and Naruto upbringing. So after he gets taken away by Jigen, he then wants to get a goldfish, which he gets the goldfish, but Jigen then unalives the goldfish, smacks the, the goldfish bowl off the table and tells him that this is what happens when you want, when you need for something, when you want for something. The people around you will always get hurt because I am the one who's going to hurt them because I am the one who, who has to, to watch over you. I am your father you are my vessel so when it comes to you trying to fill your empty vessel with anything i'm going to completely negate that so essentially when an otsusuki matter of fact i'm going to save that for another video so if you guys want that video make sure you guys like comment subscribe hey man we want we five subs away from 1k man we do the thingy but anyway back to the video so now after killing this, after unaliving the the goldfish from Kawaki, Kawaki then dives into his own sense of depression where he he longs for nothing. He knows if he longs for anything, that thing's gonna be just snuffed out, kind of like a moth to a flame. And so, when taking a look past that, we see Kawaki goes through a ton of training. He he gets basically. He trains so much, he gets basically abused. He, he He's trained when he doesn't want to be trained. So it, it leads him to kind of hiding around the karma hideout, a different spot, trying to get away from Jigen, in which Jigen does a countdown thing, where it's 10, 9, 8. And the moment he gets to zero, it's going to get a lot worse than what it was if he didn't get to zero. So Kawaki will always come out. So that way the punishment or the pain that he was, he was feeling, which was uncomparable to getting beat by his father every day, would stop um so now we get to the part where we get introduced to kawaki himself in which kawaki then is surrounded by a bunch of people who he don't necessarily know and so he he typically lashes out and creates a super explosion kind of reminiscent of dragon ball z super explosive waves if you ever use that ability on like tenkaichi three two one uh, uh, or Xenoverse as well, because I think it's an invasive on Xenoverse, but not nonetheless, I digress. So now, when Kawaki himself then gets found, he, he basically gets taken away, um, taken away and sent to the leaf against his will, um, because he basically says he doesn't want to be bothered by anyone, he's just gonna run away from Karma, he, Kara, he doesn't want to, uh, get found by Ishiki and turn into a vessel, he, he wants to basically live. Um, and so he gets taken to the village. Naruto then sees himself and Kawaki as well. The same, he looked at Kawaki, he did talk no jutsu. I used to be like you, dirty, broke, no bitches. And Kawaki felt that, you feel me? He was just like, this is the first person who genuinely wanted what's best for me without wanting anything from me. He wanted what's, he just wanted me to be happy even though I didn't want myself to be happy. And it goes to show that the good heart that Naruto has, however, not everyone could 
not you can't spill your good heart to everyone because some people could possibly take advantage of that or misconstrue your words due to a lack of understanding of who you are or in this case idolize you and refuse to have anything bad happen to you or the people you love because of their connection with you and so after Kawaki um basically just goes he pretty much gets caught by Naruto because he keeps trying to escape the village and he understands that Naruto is going to catch him regardless so he might as well just not run so he then accepts staying at Naruto's house Boruto doesn't like Kawaki at all um you can kind of view Boruto and Kawaki relationship as Boruto's relationship with the ninja tool itself because we know Kawaki is also considered a ninja tool so let's just make that parallel so Boruto learns right before meeting Kawaki that a ninja tool is not necessarily bad or good it's about the person who uses it and he also learned and we also get earlier in Boruto how Sasuke said that Boruto still has uh the soul of a ninja what it takes to be a ninja while Naruto doesn't be believe that he believes that everything has changed he, he's looking on the outside and not looking on the inside and so Boruto while being trained with Sasuke understands he has to look between the min the hidden meaning of things because when the Momoshiki fight came up Boruto asked Sasuke there is a lot of other stronger a lot of other stronger shinobi he could have brought but Sasuke said nah his jutsu is special he, he peered into the hidden meaning of his jutsu just basically utilizing it better then Boruto himself was able to utilize it just giving him the perfect situation to be able to use the Vanus and Rasengan to capitalize and then ultimately destroy Momoshiki but even then, Boruto had that support. Kawaki never had that support. Everything was always led to selfishness with Kawaki. So when Kawaki always told Boruto, leave him alone, you're a shitty, you're a shitty person, or you're a shitty brat, it was just basically him saying that he doesn't he shouldn't get involved with him because he's bad news. Everything that comes to him always ends negatively. And so Boruto pretty much didn't listen to that and began to grow closer to Kawaki by peering into the hidden meaning of things basically showing that Kawaki himself um he says one thing however it's ultimately because of another reason so he may call you leave him alone because you're a little shithead but he's only telling you that because he doesn't want you to get involved or get hurt because of him because then that guilt is also put on his shoulders on top of the other guilt that's been placed over on his shoulders over the course of years so now after they, after Boruto understands that Kawaki may say one thing, but mean a completely other thing and peer into the true meaning of what Kawaki is discussing, they grow a lot closer. Um, we have an aspect where Kawaki has an episode in the anime with Himurari where Himurari is feeding this wild wolf. And so eventually the wolf himself, um, Kawaki goes with Himurari multiple days to feed this wolf. And so he, he inadvertently sees himself as this wolf an injured person who needs help or an injured animal that needs help and so himawari was that one person that helped that animal and that animal finally found one person it wasn't necessarily able to lash out with because it didn't want anything bad from it, it didn't want to hurt the animal it just wanted she just wanted to feed the animal and, and nurse the animal back to health similar to how naruto and kawaki relationship is kawaki was a wounded person and naruto love began to heal kawaki but ultimately that healing process was something that Kawaki was never necessarily used to and he began to lash out from there so now after the wolf ultimately gets mauled by a bear Kawaki actually takes this personally as Himawari is right there crying over the wolf rubbing his fair telling everything is going to be um okay it doesn't have to be in pain anymore Kawaki abruptly begins to walk off and ask Himawari was he able to make it home by herself uh in which he proceeds to go and find the very bear that mauls um the wolf and unalive the bear just because of the pain that it caused him worry and not only him worry but the wolf as well because that wolf is connected to him worry and it goes to show that kawaki if he would have preemptively struck the wolf could have been saved because he was informed that there are different animals um in the forest that often tries to to fight the wolf itself and so now fast forward past that we have the aspect of Jigen coming to the Uzumaki household in which it was all Kawaki's fault that he came. Although Naruto said he was going to come regardless, it doesn't matter whether if Kawaki was there or not because the Leaf Village or Naruto was going to be a thorn in his side and try to prevent him from creating that God Tree. However, 
Lukawaki himself being the catalyst to Jigen coming, he felt totally responsible in which he then has tried to tell Jigen just to take him with him to lead the Hokage along, thus taking that sacrificial role again. And we see that with multiple ninjas, like, for example, Toborama, when he takes the sacrificial role with fighting the thousand Irakagir ninjas and the, the Gold and Silver Brothers. You feel me? And so it's a ton of people. Even even uh, uh, the third Hokage took the sacrificial role. Minato took a sacrificial role. Kakashi Hatake took a sacrificial role. Choza took a sacrificial role. And Shikaku, which is Shikamaru's father, took a sacrificial role. Um, Ino Dad, hey man, I wasn't an Ino Dad fan, man. Let me pull it up like this, bro. He pulled up like this, bro. I'm not, nah, bro. He pulled up pulling out the Hokari domain expansion, bro. I'm not, I was never a fan of that nigga. Now, regardless of the fact, every ninja takes up a sacrificial role. So even though Kawaki wasn't raised as a ninja, the trials and tribulations that he had to go through through his life ultimately gave him the same mental fortitude and sacrificial role that most ninjas typically view themselves in. Um, and so, fast forwarding, when Naruto gets sealed, Kawaki brings it upon himself to take Boruto, Sada, and so that way they can save Naruto. He's guest for the village themselves, so he doesn't really abide by the rules there of being ninja of this to what the hell they got to say because he's not from there. So now, when you look over to, um... Once they get Naruto back, you see, uh, well, when Naruto gets sealed, you see the, the light dimmed on Kawaki's hand. And even though the, the light dimmed on Kawaki's hand, he often carries that same hand around. And the reason why he lost his hand is because, obviously, he blocks Delta Laser Beam that blocks regeneration. Uh, so that way he can save Himorari's life. But before that, well, after that, he constantly carries the hand around while Naruto is sealed in there. Just going to show that even though Naruto isn't there, he still has an attachment to this person. He wants to make sure that attachment um, or that connection with that person may be the only person before Boruto, because Naruto accepted Kawaki before Boruto himself, was as close to him as possible and that he would do anything, including sacrificing himself in order to save Naruto himself. And so with Boruto, after saving Naruto and Boruto uh, gets taken over by... But well, before saving Naruto, but Boruto gets taken over by Momoshiki. Temporarily, Kawaki understands that there is an even bigger problem at hand rather than just the Osutsuki. It's the, the person he loved, the one he, that he considered his brother as well to be a threat. And so Kawaki and Boruto then begin to understand what their goals are, or begin to come up with goals that they can achieve together, which is getting rid of the karma for both. And so since they was able to essentially kill uh, unalive Isiki and his extinguish his soul kawaki's karma went away but boruto still got his karma in which that problem still occurs however kawaki gained got into a situation where he was actually powerless and unable to actually be able to help um take care of boruto or fight alongside boruto or fight alongside these other ninjas so that way they can have the best possible outcome and this results in him getting a more genetic modified karma implanted because essentially Amado knew because Kawaki felt spent so much time with karma and the power of karma without that power he would feel useless and go into this depressed state so not only did he provide him with a karma that had Ishiki's abilities embedded into it he also had his daughter embedded into the karma as well in regards to her genetic code so now looking past this we also know Kawaki didn't necessarily want to, to kill Boruto because when Code invades, he essentially tries to give himself up again, basically taking that sacrificial role again so that way no one can has to get hurt. But the whole thing about that is he he doesn't understand the the actual ramifications of the, the great the divine tree being cultivated. Uh Cole basically would feed him to the tree and then even though he did all this to save everyone. It would technically still destroy everyone because the great divine tree absorbs every every living being on the planet. So his sacrifice would be enough, which is why Boruto jumped in using uh, Momoshiki's um, experience in battle, making him hit, hit harder 
be more flexible, hit faster, or be faster. And so, Kawaki tells Boruto the butt out of it. He doesn't know what he's talking about. While Boruto is telling Kawaki that even if you sacrifice yourself, it's going to ultimately end up for nothing because the same situation we're trying to avoid is still going to occur just through code instead of the means of Ota Suzuki, which uh, Kawaki understands. And so, when Momoshiki takes over Boruto because of the result of uh, because of the side effect of the drugs he's been taking, trying to suppress the Osusuki uh, because at this point Boruto is at eighty five percent, and it seems like the more you use karma, the karma, which is the the DNA of the gods themselves being embedded into your body, the faster that DNA is being processed because you're utilizing their battle experience, so they're able to sync up with your body a lot quicker, and your data get override, your DNA gets override by their genetic code. So now. Kawaki killing Boruto was just his last means of trying to save every everyone on the planet without also taking the life of the Okage because he understands that even if Naruto wants to destroy him, he, he would take on all that hatred, similar to how Sasuke was. Uh, he was saying he would take on the entire, everyone's hatred in the world and become that one person that everyone wants to destroy so that way it can unite everyone. Um, and so... Well, you have that same sacrificial role being brought to Kawaki, and it goes to show that Kawaki has a similar upbringing to Naruto, but with the method of Sasuke, while Boruto has a similar upbringing to Sasuke, because everybody naturally gravitated towards Sasuke while he pulled himself away, but he ultimately ends up like Naruto, just basically showing that they basically had... Uh, the the opposite person the upbringing and then the opposite person end result and so when we look at Kawaki uh, after he kills Boruto he's really sad it's not he doesn't necessarily want to be around anybody after that everyone calls him the Hokage killer the Hokage son killer Boruto assistant gets eighty five percent of organs transferred into his body from Momoshiki's DNA so now Momoshiki can't reincarnate completely however he can still technically take control over the vessel so now. Kawaki notices Boruto tech talking to Momoshiki and then understand that Momoshiki is still a major factor in Boruto Osusuki-fication and also a big factor in, in the cultivation of that that divine tree. And so with Naruto not having Boriyamo, Sasuke not having the Rengon at this time, it, there wouldn't really be anybody who's able to actually stand up to Momoshiki's power if he were to be reincarnated into Boruto. So that's why... Kawaki goes on the speed trying to unalive Boruto again, in which he tries to hit Sarada and then scratches Boruto. And so when he damages Sarada, Kawaki never necessarily been close to Sarada. However, he, he understands usually why Sarada does the things he does. So it just goes to show that he has the same battle IQ as them, if not better uh, or more. And so he doesn't necessarily ap apologize to Sarada, but he was just basically saying like, he said that you need to basically just stay out the way because, yeah, the slash was meant for Sarada, but Boruto jumped in the way because Sarada was trying to stop Kawaki from stopping Boruto. So he's going to take out the weaker target before he takes out the bigger target because it would make no sense. 